Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, good afternoon, and I want to start off by thanking Chairman Hoven and Vice Chairman Udall and members of the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs for their dedicated service to the Native American communities. Today, I'm introducing my bill to provide for a comprehensive assessment of the Indian Health Service, S-465. As you know, the IHS is the agency responsible for providing health care for American Indians and Alaska Natives as required by federal treaty agreement. For years, tribal members in my home state of South Dakota have dealt with unimaginable horrors in dealing with IHS facilities. Upon taking office in 2015, my staff and I have spent significant time trying to learn more about these problems. In our research, we found four primary areas of concern. There is no funding allocation strategy for the 12 IHS regions. There is no standard of quality measurement. And there is a high turnover of staff resulting in low ac uh, accountability among management. And there is no consultation with the tribes. The IHS serves approximately 2.2 million Native Americans who are members of 500 and 67 federally recognized tribes. For fiscal year 2017, IHS was appropriated just under $5 billion in discretionary funding and $147 million in mandatory funding from the Special Diabetes Program. This does not include third-party collections of approximately $1.1 billion. Despite a large user population and an annual appropriation of $5 billion, IHS does not have a funding formula. Regional allocations are not based upon the number of people who received health care through IHS, regional user population growth, or types of services offered. While many believe that IHS is underfunded, from my standpoint, investing more taxpayer money into a dysfunctional system will only compound the problem. IHX, IHS lacks an efficient system and an accountability. This needs to be addressed before we consider funding, and then I agree it's time to talk about adequate and appropriate funding. Furthermore, there are no consistent qualitative measurements. The most recent qualitative measurements are from 2008, nearly a decade ago. Nearly, it, it is unclear if IHS management has any sense of which regions are successful or failing. IHS divides itself into 12 service areas in the United States. IHS's Great Plains area, which serves South Dakota tribal members, has the worst health care disparities of all IHS regions, including the lowest life expectancy, the highest diabetes rate, five times the U.S. average, the highest TB death rate, and the highest overall age-adjusted death rate. To give you an idea of some of the things that we're seeing and hearing in our area, the Wall Street Journal reported three examples in June of 27, I'll quote, at the Indian Health Service Hospital in Pine Ridge, uh, a five, uh, this is in South Dakota, a 57-year-old man was sent home with a bronchitis diagnosis only to die five hours later of heart failure. When a patient at the federal agency's Winnebago, Nebraska facility stopped breathing, nurses responded to the code blue, found the emergency supply cart was empty, and the man died. In Sisseton, South Dakota, a high school prom queen was coughing up blood. An IHS doctor gave her cough syrup and an anti-anxiety medication. Within days, she died of a blood clot in her lung. Just this August, IHS officials announced that patients who have recently received care at the podiatry clinic in Winnebago IHS Hospital may have been exposed to HIV and hepatitis. Because there are not standard of quality expectations and a methodology to measure quality, these facilities are failing very basic quality performances that our people deserve. In fact, the quality problems have become so pervasive that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, their accreditation of several IHS facilities are in jeopardy. Throughout the past year and a half, the Rosebud and Pine Ridge hospitals in the Great Plains region have been operating under a systems improvement agreement with CMS trying to regain their accreditation status. Thankfully, the systems improvement agreement at Rosebud was completed on September 1st of this year. However, our office was made aware of multiple timeline extensions in Pine Ridge because these IHS direct care facilities continue to fail CMS surveys. Just last Friday, the Pine Ridge IHS Hospital was deemed not in compliance with CMS's conditions of participation for emergency services. By issuing a final notification for the Pine Ridge IHS Hospital, the facility is in immediate jeopardy status and the hospital's provider agreement will be terminated at the end of next week. 
Termination means that IHS can no longer bill Medicare for services, impacting Medicaid funding as well. Further, future third-party revenue available to IHS fund services, maintenance projects, and other necessary costs will likely be reduced. Finally, there is a high turnover throughout the entire IHS organization. In fact, under the Great Plains region, we've had five different area directors in just the last 21 months. That's an average tenure in this important management position of roughly four months. We haven't had a full-time director since February of 2015. Tribal members are suffering and even dying due to inadequate and disgraceful care. IHS will only continue to fail until we take a close look into the operations, funding, quality of care, and management at IHS. I believe that a comprehensive assessment of IHS is necessary first as a necessary first step to making calculated and systemic changes at IHS. S-465 would accomplish this goal and set us on a path of addressing the long-standing failures of IHS. It would require the Inspector General of the Department of Health and Human Services to conduct an assessment of IHS's healthcare delivery systems and financial management processes only at direct care facilities. I want to be clear. This assessment is not proposed for tribes with 638 agreements in place, only direct IHS facilities. Um, let me just finish with this. The assessment that I'm proposing is a proven model of identifying potential reforms. We all remember the problems in 2014 with the Veterans Administration Healthcare. To address this issue, Congress passed legislation calling for the Secretary of the VA to conduct an overall and systematic assessment of the VA healthcare system. The integrated report was completed within the mandated time frame of less than a year and was officially submitted to the Secretary of the VA in September of 2015. The assessment provided feedback and recommended changes that could lead to improvement in healthcare outcomes. The same should be done for the Indian Health Service. Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, I thank you both for your time and patience with me in my message to you today. Thank you.